there's people who I'm seeing go 10 times harder to defend negativity than they have ever gone to try to push positivity. Dog, they go so hard when they're trying to make excuses for and make room for anything that's evil or that's not righteous or that's wretched. You heard me? And you like, dang, you going that hard behind that? <laughs> Meanwhile, when it's anything positive, it's like, oh, you've never gone remotely as hard or been as passionate about pushing any of that. When you see that and you observe that, what you supposed to do? You supposed to stop what you're doing for people like that? Come on, man. I see with, with fans. I'm just like, yo, I'm here to empower artists and fans, bro. And sometimes empowering people is about saying, I love the fact that we got to have some difficult conversations in this culture. Because without difficult conversations, we can't solve these difficult problems we got. You know? And, and, and that's, 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 that feels threatening to some fans when they hear that. Cause they like, Whoa, you trying to mess up the status quo. You trying to mess up what we used to imagine somebody that's addicted to dope. And if they see like, hold on, man, you trying to come through and take dope off the streets, man, you tripping. You my op now. You know what I'm saying? Cause I love this dope that I consume. I love it. Like, who are you to be trying to do that? And it's like, yo, I'm doing this for your health. Like, you, you a fiend. What are you talking about? You a fiend. And you mad at me? But that's how I be happening. Um, you know, everybody love listening to murder music until somebody they know get murdered. Then they crying. Everybody love listening to murder music until they get that phone call that t -t 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 just got killed. Then it hit different. Then it's like, God, dog, we got to go to this funeral. Like, man, this this messed up. You feel me? All these women, they love listening to this music that's disrespecting them because they like the beat. You heard me? Or they just like, they like the chorus. It's catchy, da-da-da. Until they sitting back like, man, I ain't got no father to these kids that I done gave birth to. Well, what you mean? The music that you love to listen to that music is basically telling you that you ain't nothing and these dudes don't respect you and you love listening to that. Yeah. But now you want to complain? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just 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 to play devil's advocate, because I already know what some of the comments are going to say. Um, all right, well, some, pe some people may say, like, well, like you said, it's just entertainment. And then some other people may say, well, that's the environment that they come from. So they're going to rap about what they know and rap about, you know what I'm saying? Like what they have been through. So what's your response to that? That's an excuse. That's an excuse because as a human being, how many different things do we do on a daily basis? We do so many different things. We wake up. Some of us pray. We brush our teeth. We take showers. We put our clothes on. We eat some food. You hear me? We listen to something. We might watch something. We might get in a whip. You know, we travel somewhere. We have so many different human experiences that I guarantee you, brother, that you can choose to talk about something different in your music if you really wanted to. But then it becomes, well, that's not what people want. That right there, that's the golden nugget. When, when you start doing what people want and when you realize that people don't know what they want, people don't know what they want. And it's not, and is it more about what people want or is it more about what God wants? And that makes people uncomfortable because they're like, ah, but you trying to make me, you trying to make it harder for me. Whoever said that they're taking the narrow road in life was easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's essential. It's essential when you think about what's eternal, but people ain't think about what's eternal. They think about what's temporary. They think about what's right in front of their face. So, I'm just coming from a place of common sense at this point, brother. Like, I'm just coming from a place of common sense. Um, the amount of rappers that get killed every year far outweighs the amount of entertainers in any other genre that get killed every year. What, what do we say about that? Is there, any, is there any connection to maybe, hmm, hmm, the music that we're putting out there not that the music by itself is making people go out and commit these crimes, but 
people always want to talk about vibrations and frequencies. What kind of frequency you think that is when we got a whole community that's constantly just putting out, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. When I see you, you my op. I'm spinning the block. You hear me? I'm sliding on my dot, 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 dot. What are we putting out there, man? We normalizing something that should be terrifying. We normalizing it. But do we care enough to want to change it? That's the real question. Do we care enough? And it got to be the artists and the fans to want to change it, bro. Stop with the, oh, we need to attack the industry. Bro, I don't even know who the industry is. The industry ain't no one person. But when I see these fans and I see your screen name pop up, you hear me? And I see these artists and I and I interact with y'all. Y'all are real human beings, man. So let's have some real talks with the fans and the artists to figure out what we could do. Because guess what? Ain't no industry without us. What the heck is an industry without an artist and without a fan? It don't exist. So we got to realize that we got the power. Yeah, no, that's uh, but I'm the enemy. But everything I just said, I'm the I'm the bad guy. You hear I me? Mean? That's crazy. Me personally, when it comes to uh rappers talking about some of these things, my personal opinion is um I believe that it's okay for them to rap about those things, but I would also like for them to tell the whole story. Like if you don't talk about selling dope, all right, cool, but you also need to talk about how much uh how much you lost behind that how you went to jail behind this how you lost friends behind it like tell the whole story you know what i'm saying if you're gonna talk about killing talk about the uh effects of that you know what i'm saying so that's 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 personally what, what i would like to see is like a balance you know what i'm saying like you look at somebody like like there was artists who used to do that and still do that like somebody like a like a scarface or like a pimp c like those are artists who rapped about those things but also countered it with you know what I'm saying? The effects of those things. Right up. You know what that is? That's when you turn it from glorification to education. There you go. Yeah. And that's all I'm asking for. You right, bro. Yeah. I talk about gun violence in my music. Because I didn't see it. Yeah. First hand. Yeah. I didn't have it impact my life and my world. Come on, man. It's not like I'm not exposed to this and, and don't think that that needs to be talked about. Of course. But it's a difference between glorification and education. There you go. So we need more people like you who are saying what you're saying to just be like, yo, this is what we're trying to say, y'all. Because people quick to think like, man, you trying to censor me. My First Amendment right, you know, feel infringed upon. Like, I can't. you trying to tell me I can't even talk. No, we're not saying that. We're just saying, man, why do we want to glorify this, man? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I could, bro. No, the way the way God got my life set up, bro, is I'll be at dinner in an hour with somebody who done killed people and served buku time in prison and got out and totally changed their life around. I'll be on campus where I'm a professor at, at Tufts University with students who served half of their life in prison for Crimes that they've committed might have taken people's life as well. And now they didn't totally turn their life around. And I'm sitting here like, yo, these are people who have really done this stuff. And they're like, man, that ain't nothing to be glorifying. And I'm recognizing that we can still relate to one another. We can still form a friendship. But it's not something to where they have to say, well, since I did this, that means that I'm that person forever. They've transformed. So my thing is like, yo, for all of us, the goal is to transform. And there's more fans than artists. So we need the fans to start transforming. We need the fans to actually look at themselves and say, man, what am I doing? Because nine out of ten artists are going to rap about whatever the fans want here. Because the artist is just trying to make it, brother. Our artist just saying, man, look, whatever the people want here, man, you mean to tell me I can make some money off of rapping? Man, what the people want? I'm willing to do whatever. You got one out of ten artists that think like D1. Man, forget what them people want. I'm finna do what God want. Only one out of ten artists think like that. But for the other nine out of ten, they like, man, whatever them fans want, whatever them people want, was gonna get me paid. You heard me? That's what I'm doing. So we need the fans to do better. So everybody who's like, oh, D1 talking about these artists, man, I, I'm passionate when it comes to artists because I am one. So I done seen all sides of the game. 
That's all. That's all. That's why I talk to my fellow brothers and sisters, because I am one of us. That's my peer group. That's my coworkers. But at the end of the day, man, it's about the fans at this point, man. From this day forward, from this interview forward, that's what that's what the shift needs to uh, really be upon is the fans leading the way to say we're going to support more of a different type of message. And we're going to not uh, we're going to not put the pressure on artists to feel like, oh, that's all we want to hear from them is the glorification of murder and of negativity. So that's because that's why nine out of ten of them going to do it. So what's the issue with Joe Budden and like, I don't even know where this whole thing started with Joe Budden. So just cut, can you kind of give a background of, of how your issue with Joe Budden started? Well, first and foremost, shout out to Joe Budden okay. because uh, it, it's not an issue that I have with Joe Budden at all. Um, just full transparency. Uh, I grew up as a fan of Joe Budden's music, Mood Music, the whole Mood Music uh, mixtape series, Patty Rum album, you know. Uh, like I grew up listening to all of that stuff. I grew up putting people in my community on his music when they was like, man, we don't, we don't listen to this. Yeah. I'm like, no, bro, you need to listen to this, you know? Uh, so that's, that's first and foremost. So, uh, as far as how everything started, I just started, um, he mentioned me on his podcast, you know? So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, I'm a public figure. So anybody is entitled to mention me, uh, on their podcast or on their page or on their platform that's perfectly fine um the way he mentioned me was uh calling me a clout chaser you know and i guess in the rap game nowadays that's supposed to be something that really uh implies that you are like a bad person or that you are not genuine or that you are just desperate for some attention and anybody who knows me or who does a, a little bit of research will see that D1 been the same since before the dreadlocks was even touching his his neck. You hear me? Straight up, been the same. And they'll also see that D1 is one of the most genuine people that's in this game right now. You know what I mean? So uh, when I heard those comments, it was just like, oh man, really, brother? That's how like that's how you feel about me? And so I just I clarified that like, nah, that's actually not who I am and not what I am. So I, I spoke, I spoke back. Yeah. He just spoke back to you again, right? Yeah, man. He, he came back with something else. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I think it's been like three episodes now that uh people have like sent me clips of and like, oh, uh, your man's speaking on you again, you know, and and I'm just like, word. Um at a certain point, uh, if someone continues to speak about you, um, I think that it would be dope for them to speak to you, you know, unless they're not interested in that. And if they're not interested in that, then it's just like, hey, uh, that's cool. If a person speaks about me, then I have a right to either speak up for myself or speak, you know, back to that person um, through whatever means I have. So if that's just having to speak through social media, that's what I have to do, you know. Yeah. But but just to, to like really make that clear. um. This is, yeah, this is somebody who, when it comes to skills, before the podcasting, and like as a rapper, it's somebody who I looked at like, yo, like I really respect dude's skill set, you know? Um, so it's, it's crazy how how things go, but it's all, a, it's all a learning process for me as well. So hopefully, hopefully something good comes out of this, um, uh, either for me and Joe Budden. You know, uh, hopefully something good comes out of it or just for the fans that are observing all of this. Hopefully something good comes out of it for them to where they see. Because um, one thing I'm not going to allow is for things to turn uh, toxic, you know, because that's secretly that's what a lot of people in hip hop be wanting to see. They'd be like, oh, it's two, two, two public figures. This this quote unquote going at it. Number one, they want it to be beef real bad. And number two secretly they want something real uh negative or toxic to happen you know and i just want to show people that being a man of god being a christian you heard me you could stand on like everybody's standing on business but what kind of business you standing on you know i'm standing on kingdom business you heard me and i want people to see that that don't mean that you weak or, or that you soft but at the same time it also don't mean that you uh are ready to take things to a level that you know 
all of the casual uh messy observers wanted to go to you know yeah i get it all right uh this is what i'm gonna do bro i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna quote some of your lyrics all right? all right and then after i quote it you can just kind of give me a breakdown of that lyric or what you meant by it or you know what i'm saying however you want to yeah you want to talk about it all right i respect a business woman out here killing it but if we both some workaholics i ain't feeling it oh yeah that's on my song uh kevin samuels yeah <laughs> Yeah. What, what what did you mean by that? I meant that <laughs> if a man and a woman are both so busy with their profession inside inside of a relationship, then that's not the type of relationship that I want to be in. Because at that point, y'all are both putting y'all careers before family and before before loving one another. And there's a difference between doing that out of survival mode, you know, and doing that out of just, hey, I just love these personal achievements and these accomplishments, you know. I you. So I would never tell someone not to do that. I would just maybe say, oh, uh, this ain't the right relationship for me personally. But for the next dude, he might love that same woman. Uh, unfortunately, social media calls that a power couple. Yeah. You know, they look at it like... Oh, y'all both, yeah, y'all both celebrities or y'all both super busy or, or you killing it like this and they killing it like this. That's cool. But everything comes with a cost. And if the cost is y'all really, it look good when y'all post for pictures together and when y'all post y'all professional accomplishments, you know, next to one another. But the actual lifestyle that comes along with that is one where y'all don't even have time for one another. Y'all purposes don't complement one another. That's what I don't want is to be with somebody who they are clearly doing amazing things, but there's no synergy in terms of our God given purposes complementing one another. Could we supposed to be a team?